G'day Ziggy D here, back with some more Fallout 76 coverage. One of the things I had an opportunity to take a closer look at, at the hands-on event, is the workshops system. I also had a short follow-up interview with one of the developers who worked on the system, so I can share some solid info on the mechanics and the gameplay surrounding them. First though, I'll need to share a little bit of background info that gives you some context for which the workshop system was within. Crafting, firstly, is going to be a huge part of Fallout 76. Weapons, armor, modifications for your gear, ammo and other supplies can all be crafted, and indeed some of the best items will be crafted. One of the developers mentioned to me that there are approximately 4,000 weapon mods alone. I think that for many people, collecting recipes, modding weapons and crafting gear is going to be a huge endgame driving force. Another important note is that building takes a stronger presence in Fallout 76 than it did in Fallout 4. And indeed, with the camp system, each player will have a pseudo-mobile base they can continually work on improving and take with them on their adventures. Now I'm not covering camps here in this video specifically, but building them up over time is going to be an endgame for many players. And indeed, your camp will likely be your base of operations for all of your crafting endeavours. The commonality between these two systems, crafting and camp-based building, is resources. To craft and build, you need resources, and you'll probably be needing a lot of them. Now, resources can be harvested from the environment, collected from slain enemies, and salvaged from junk and gear found about the world. But to supplement or really boost your resource collection, there is the workshops system. Workshops themselves are locations you can capture and hold and then proceed to utilize for the specific resources they will each offer. Think of the whole workshop system as competitive territory control. When you arrive at the workshop location, you'll be made aware through a quest that you can attempt to claim it as your own. To do so, you'll need to clear out all the enemies at the location. In my session, we came upon Sunshine Meadows Industrial Farm, which was being occupied by a bunch of ghouls. I also briefly saw another workshop that was being occupied by super mutants, though I didn't get very far with that. Now clear out all of the enemies, and then you can approach the bench and attempt to claim it. Claiming a workshop costs a number of caps, in this case it cost me 25 caps, and you must remain in the highlighted area until it's claimed. Once the workshop is claimed, you can then use a bench to access the workshop build menu. From here you can build all manner of things including defensive fortifications and turrets. Now here's a really important point. Unlike building at your camp or doing your personal crafting projects, building at workshops does not use your own personal resources. Instead, each workshop has its own pool of resources that you can build with. This is quite important because fundamentally, your ownership of a workshop is intended to be temporary. At some point, enemies are going to come and reclaim it, or another player will take it from you. The whole point of this system is to stake a temporary claim on these workshops and then defend them for as long as you can. So you don't want to be getting too attached to a single workshop, nor should you spend a long time building one up and making it pretty. Long term building improvements is done through your camp, which is much more permanent. The workshops, however, are territories that will change hands pretty often. Indeed, if another player takes your workshop, they will take control of anything prior owners had built there, which is okay again because workshop building is done from the workshop's own pool of resources. So why then take the effort to capture, defend and build a workshop? Each workshop produces some kind of resources. They will have either one or perhaps even a few resource production facilities, harvesting points or mining points. The workshop I claimed at Sunshine Meadows had two that I could find. The first is a food packaging factory. In order to get it running, it needed 20 units of power. The best that I could build at the time was 5 unit power generators, so I had to build 4 of them and connect them up to the food packager. Upon doing so, it automatically started producing food at a regular rate of 25 units of food per hour. There was even a nearby terminal that allowed me to select from a few different options. I naturally went for sugar bombs. So once powered up, this factory was going to produce me 25 sugar bombs an hour. Since everyone needs to eat in this game, I can imagine that this could be quite handy to build up a food stockpile. 
I can imagine other workshops might contain factories for producing even more useful things, like ammo or meds. I even saw in another YouTuber's footage a factory for producing fusion cores, which would be a pretty high endgame priority, I imagine. The second thing that I found at Sunshine Meadows was a junk pile, which is a harvesting point. Placing a junk collector on top of this and powering it up produces a steady stream of 25 junk per hour. Doesn't really make much sense, like a junk mining factory, but this is Fallout, whatever. <laughs> and since junk is the real currency of the wasteland due to those 4,000 mods we want to craft, this seems like it's going to be a pretty important one. Junk, by the way, is similar to what you could collect in Fallout 4. Desk fans, kitchen utensils, old vacuum cleaners and that sort of thing. All stuff that you don't directly use in-game, but instead salvage at crafting benches for useful crafting resources, like metals, screws, gears, and so on. Junk is the lifeblood of your crafting, so make sure to gather it whenever you can and salvage it all at benches at every opportunity. So here's the thing. AI enemies will attack your workshop, and if they succeed, you will lose your claim on it. From what I was told, this might happen every hour or so. While I was building it must have hit one of these hour points because we had one attack of some small robots that weren't too difficult to deal with. It seems likely that high level workshops will have much more dangerous attacks, and also that some attacks will be more threatening than others. The real threat, however, will come from other players. Someone wandering by sees your factory is just pumping out useful resources, and they are likely to think, huh, I might get me a slice of that pie. And just like we originally claimed the workshop from the bench, so too can other players. Though it does take quite a bit longer apparently, as they'll have to first unclaim the workshop, and then claim it for themselves. In addition to that, players can steal your resources that have stockpiled up in your factories. As such, you'll want to both build up some solid defences as a bit of deterrent to thieves, and you'll want to keep an eye on any attack warnings. AI attacks gave out a warning, and it seems likely that you'll get a warning if another player is attempting to capture your workshop as well. So, as you are probably imagining, this is an inherently PvP system. In my last video I showed how PvP is pretty low stakes if you just do random dueling out in the world, and also that it's quite easy to avoid. Well, workshops are likely where the serious PvP will be taking place. The stakes are your claiming fee, time and resource production, so some serious PvP is probably going to take place over these things. I did check with the dev I spoke to whether low level players or pacifists would be able to cheese this system, but he said that if you're claiming a workshop it's implied that you're ready to defend it, so it's open season on PvP around workshops even if you're a lower level. Personally, I think this is a very exciting system. For those players who aren't into PvP, you're probably not going to engage in the workshop system too much, unless you're on a quiet server or you're okay with it being an easy target for someone else to claim. But for those players who are happy to PvP, this adds a real reason to form alliances, learn to build effective defenses, get into some fights, and try to take ownership over the world. I can imagine that it'll be tempting to try and hold multiple workshops and go exploring whenever they're not being attacked, but spread yourself too thin and you won't be able to defend them properly. And perhaps most excitingly, this system is what will allow some players to roleplay as raiders. Raid other people's workshops, steal their produced resources, and move on with your profits. I know that with the PvP system the game has, some people were concerned they wouldn't really be able to roleplay their raider self, but I think this system is the one that allows it. I think overall this adds a huge new layer to the game, and I was really excited once I learned how it all worked. I can actually see workshops and the territory control they encourage becoming an endgame in themselves. Let me know what you think about this system in the comments below, I'm curious. Will you be controlling workshops and building up their defences? Or are you instead going to roam about raiding other people's workshops and profiting from their hard work? Or will you simply completely avoid the system and it holds no interest to you? Personally, I'm interested in the idea of forming some alliances of players and then hoping that other people do the same in competition. This could result in an endless war of raiding, claiming, and, well, nuking each other's workshops. That'd be friggin' awesome. Anyway, that's it for now. I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.